you may never get high blood pressure after watching this video. The most important thing to know about blood pressure is that it is a symptom. It's not a root cause. And in this video, we're going to talk about the root causes because the problem with hypertension is that 95% of it is classified as something called essential high blood pressure, which basically means they don't really know what causes it. it might be caused by, you know, genetics or lifestyle. We don't know. But if you lose weight, and reduce your salt and you exercise and you stop smoking and you stop drinking, it might go away. There's also a lot of people who don't exercise and they don't have high blood pressure. And there's a large group of people who consume a lot of salt and they don't have high blood pressure. And when someone is put on hypertensive medication, 20% of the time, it doesn't work. Now, why wouldn't that work? Because they're treating the symptom. They're not fixing the cause. Anytime you treat the symptom without fixing the root cause, you camouflage the problem. It continues. Now, if you have high blood pressure, I'm not telling you to come off your medication without your doctor's consent, but I want to give you some really important information that will help you get to the root of this problem. All right, now let's get into the root causes, okay? Let's start with the big one, vitamin D deficiency. There is a hormone system called the water pressure control system. When this system gets triggered and it goes up, there is a potent vasoconstriction going on in your arteries. Basically, there's a squeezing of the arteries and the pressure is going to go up. That is triggered by low vitamin D. This system being high also causes a massive retention of sodium. Wherever the sodium goes, the water goes. More sodium, more water, more pressure. This is why there's a big push to get everyone with high blood pressure off of sodium or on a low sodium diet. They would be much better off giving the person vitamin D and also increasing their potassium. The more potassium you have, the more sodium you could have. Potassium protects you against the excess amount of sodium. People that are salt sensitive are really potassium deficient. And unfortunately, the majority of the population doesn't get enough potassium because you need so much. You need like 4,700 milligrams every single day. No one's getting that much. And also look at how many people are deficient in vitamin D. It's just off the charts. Another interesting point about this is that your risk of high blood pressure goes up during the winter. Why is that? The way the sun is angled at the earth, there's just not enough UV radiation to create enough vitamin D in our skin. And then we have this other very important factor. The darker your skin, the more you're at risk for high blood pressure. On average, if you have dark skin, your risk for high blood pressure goes up by 2x. Why does this happen? Because melanin in your skin is a pigment and it acts as a sunscreen. It, it blocks you of ultraviolet radiation, making it very difficult to make vitamin D. This is why the darker your skin, the more vitamin D you need to take or the more sun exposure you need to have. Then you get into the genetic high blood pressure situation. Well, that's usually associated with a genetic problem with vitamin D, which is interesting. There's a super high percentage of people that have a genetic problem with vitamin D that can't absorb vitamin D that well, and they need a lot more vitamin D. So I've even questioned, do we really have a genetic blood pressure problem, or do we have a genetic problem with vitamin D that's causing the high blood pressure? I mentioned that 95% of all blood pressure problems are essential, which means they're unknown cause. So it could be lifestyle, it could be genetic, they don't know. They just throw all these lifestyle things in a box and you know, we just don't know. But in the meantime, keep taking medication because until we find out a cause, we need to keep that pressure low. Then we have this insulin resistant connection. If you consume a lot of carbs or you're eating a lot of snacks, you develop this condition called insulin resistance. And this is a precursor for high blood glucose. And it is the root cause of a fatty liver, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, belly fat, high glucose. It's all just insulin resistance. If you're low in vitamin D, your risk for getting this goes high. So that could be one mechanism why some people that are obese develop hypertension because the obesity is diluting the vitamin D and either triggering insulin resistance or just causing high blood pressure directly. Vitamin D depends on magnesium. Magnesium is essential for vitamin D to work. So these go hand in hand. So this is why I put vitamin D, magnesium, and potassium. Okay, those three right there. Let's look at another connection between vitamin D and soft tissue calcium. Now you have this situation where if there's too much calcium in the arteries, your arteries can get stiff 
and actually your blood pressure can go up from there. And if you watch some of my other videos, I recommend taking vitamin K2 to direct the calcium into the bone or the teeth and out of the soft tissues. And there's actually even a test called the coronary artery calcification test, which is a really good indicator or a predictor of all cause mortality. This is why people with cramps at night or just leg cramps or feet cramps, really they need more magnesium. Why? Magnesium prevents the calcium from building up in the tissues. And also think about women who are postmenopausal that take calcium supplements, their risk for heart attack goes up. Why? Because you're dumping all this calcium. I mean, some women are taking like 1200 or 1500 milligrams of calcium every single day. And sometimes they even take it with vitamin D. They're still at risk for heart problems. Why? Because they're deficient in magnesium. Magnesium keeps the calcium from getting too high and forming clots. That's right. Too much clotting or a thrombosis, they call it, could be coming from too much calcium. Also, arrhythmias can also be coming from too much calcium. And guess what? Magnesium is the antidote to preventing building up in the arteries, heart attacks, all sorts of things. And let's just talk about two medications they use for high blood pressure. Calcium channel blockers, which by the way, magnesium is a natural calcium channel blocker, but you can't patent it, so they use a medication. Then you also have something else called beta blockers. Beta blockers block adrenaline, okay? So if there's too much adrenaline in the body, your blood pressure will go up as well. And take a well guess what a natural beta blocker is. Not just magnesium, but vitamin D. Both of these will naturally decrease adrenaline. Now let's roll into the four things I recommend to correct the problem if you have high blood pressure. Okay, vitamin D. I would take 10,000 IUs every single day, but if you're trying to correct high blood pressure, take 20,000 or even a little bit more. Now, if you have any thought in your mind that 20,000 IUs is toxic, being out in the sun for about 40 minutes will give you 20,000 IUs of vitamin D3. So 20,000 is not a toxic level. In fact, this is really like half of one milligram of vitamin D3. Magnesium, very underrated, but it's very important. I would recommend taking magnesium glycinate. You can get a good amount of magnesium from pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, spinach, other leafy greens, almonds, and even chocolate. Just make sure you don't have the chocolate with a lot of sugar. Magnesium allows vitamin D to work. These two go hand in hand. Then I recommend going on a low carb diet because at the root of high blood pressure, metabolic syndrome, heart disease is too many carbs and consuming too much sugar and starch depletes you of vitamin D magnesium, and potassium. Okay, so you need to do that. Also, potassium is very, very important. You can get this from an electrolyte powder. I would recommend taking a high quality electrolyte powder that has about a thousand milligrams of potassium with other electrolytes, but you can also get potassium from greens, but you have to consume a very large salad every single day, but the greens will also give you magnesium. Now, to get more details on this low carb diet, you should go to this video right here.